giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm Ben. I'm here with First Capital Robot in Three Days, also on Team 225. I've got Griffin by me. Yep. Uh, I'm Griffin Delagrati, uh, FRC 2590. Anyway, we've got an awesome show for you here tonight. We're going to show you all that we've been working on over the past couple days. Before we begin, I wanted to thank our amazing sponsors. We've got Rev Robotics, Andy Mark, Vex Pro, First Updates Now, who's here sponsoring us, Penair and Hydraulics, Coupling Corporation America, we're working, and also um, just e everyone else who's, you know, helped us with parts and parents who've helped us to build these things, th these game elements, it's just been super fantastic. Um, we've got a couple great things going on tonight. We've actually got some giveaways to give away. Hang on. Tyler's uh, signaling that... Need the giveaway. Okay, yeah, we've got some giveaway. <laughs> yeah, fun, whatever. Um, we got some giveaways to give away tonight, including uh, some TechFire swag, among other things. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. So uh, speaking about, which Ben, can you grab that T-shirt after yeah. so we can take a look at that? So one of the things we're giving away is the uh, TechFire and Nemesis two two five first capital Scott. shirt here. That's pretty awesome. We have a couple sizes, by the way, so I'm not sure. Uh, if we got your size, but if you win, we'll give you a choice of a couple of them that we might have. Uh, we also do have as well, too, uh, we're giving away a Cooler Master MS120 keyboard and mouse set. This thing is absolutely sweet, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not taken a look at this, we're going to put it on screen in just a moment. Uh, but you'll have the opportunity. It's actually the keyboard I'm using right now as I'm talking here. Uh, it's a full RGB keyboard, and we can't wait to show it off for you. And we'll put that up uh, as they start talking uh, on screen as well. I uh, do also want to give a couple other uh, shouts and reminders. If you're interested in winning uh, any of the stuff that we're giving away today, you do have to make sure you click that follow button. Uh, that will get you the opportunity to get in on the entry. Or if you choose to subscribe, uh, which you can do so, do so for free with Twitch Prime, or if your parents have uh, Amazon Prime, you can link your account. Or for just a few bucks a month, you're going to get five times chance to win. And thank you to all of our subscribers, people who have given bits, and everybody who's helped keeping fun, loud, live, and independent. All right. Thank you so much, Tyler. Okay, we're going to go into showing you some of the awesome things that we have working here. Um, Griffin and the rest of the team who's worked on um, our um, mechanism for manipulating the balls and the hatch panels, why don't you come on in and talk to us a little bit about this. Sure. Uh, so before we had uh, separate mechanisms, uh, one for manipulating the hatch panel and another one for manipulating cargo. Uh, now, uh, as is uh, our intention with the final design, we've actually integrated those into a single mechanism. Um, so someone's going to have to plug in the air compressor over here just to attach the pneumatics. Uh, so we're going to demonstrate pickup first. Pretty simple procedure. Um, this will be on an arm uh, on the final robot. You can actually see that right over there. Um, yep, something like that. Um, come over to here. Simply place it right down, right on top. Sticks pretty solidly. Uh, we have our uh, team rocket here. Move over to the hatch panel location. Oh. <laughs> and uh, deploy right onto the rocket like that. Uh, we have these three uh, pneumatic pistons. I don't know if we can get a close shot on that. Yeah, uh, one, two, three. Uh, increased from two ejector pins to this design. Uh, also kind of widened it out a bit because uh, we're going to be under the cargo intake anyway. Uh, might as well take advantage of all that uh, area. Um, so it really holds onto it solid now uh, and ejects really well too. Because of the uh, long stroke on the uh, air pistons, uh, we can actually tolerate a little bit of misalignment too. Yep, just like that. And uh, 
So that's that's all the hatch. Um, now we're gonna take a look at the cargo functionality. Just a moment while we switch over here. <laughs> all right. Yeah, uh, so you might note that we do have Velcro on the bottom of this. Um, so we, we initially were kind of concerned about this too. Uh, we don't want to stick ourselves to the carpet while we're in the middle of a match. Um, so the pickup location for the cargo is actually slightly angled down. Uh, so it'll rest like this. Uh, Velcro uh, is not in contact with the carpet. Yeah, you can move around like normal. Uh, and intake the ball like that. Uh, the ball will just rest right in the intake there. Uh, it doesn't go further back into the robot in any other location. Um, you want to show, yeah, just spit out and show from uh, different orientations. self centers pretty well. Yep. So now, uh, once we have the ball secure into the mechanism, uh, we're going to show how we can put it into the rocket. Uh, so the robot maneuver, this is on the arm again. Uh, maneuver over to the rocket, uh, line up. Can you? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, and we can uh, align this so that it's pretty much right next to the uh, entry point on the rocket for the cargo. Um, you really don't have to shoot it at all. You just kind of angle yourself there and then just spit it into the goal. <laughs> I think we're good, guys. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. All right. Hey, Chad, I do want to mention, too, if you do have any questions, we'll be definitely taking those. Make sure you tag at First Updates Now in chat with your question, and we'll get to those sometime during the show. We're going to get to as many as possible as we can. So make sure you get those questions, and we got the lovely Heather who will be taking your questions and reading those off on air. Absolutely, and we'd love to take your questions with that. Now, uh, Dahani, would you mind coming up and see the CAD and show how we're planning to get this gripper in all these different orientations? Let's walk a little closer here. Uh, as you might have noticed, um, the, the only thing missing so far is the joint connecting the intake to the arm. So uh, our plan is to basically uh, power that with like a bag motor and then um, control it um, so that it can have uh, infinite degrees of freedom. So um, right here we have um, reversal planetary um, with a bag. Um, we plan on gearing it down. Uh, and then so that allows us to do stuff like, let's say, um, behind the back shot over the elevator. Um, it also allows the uh, two different angles for picking up the the hatch, and then also picking up uh, the ball. Um, so that's it so far. Awesome. Thanks, Dahani. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring in our programming team. They're going to do a little bit of talk about code. And the bigger robot you see here, we've, you've watched us put it together most of the day. It's got a... Um, it's got the, the same drive we were working on yesterday with the, the three mini sim drive. And um, a, we are now a two-stage elevator. Yesterday, we were a one-stage elevator to make sure that we can get to all the levels of the, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the scoring area that you see here. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys and let you talk about what we've been working on here. Sure. So um, mainly what we've been working on today is wiring the robot. Uh, we've got, yeah, i got to be careful not to run over the. Um, so we're mainly using uh, Talon SRXs here for controlling like the drive motors, which we have our, our six mini sims. Um, uh, a lot of the, yeah, you'll see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're using uh, three of the new uh, Neo brushless motors. Um, we've got one controlling the four bar back here, uh, and two on the lift gearbox at the bottom, which is really hard to see. Um, one of the cool things about these motors, um, right now we don't have the Java libraries released on kickoff, but uh, RevSys will be out, um, I think, by the end of the week. So 
one of the, the cool features of this is you can actually use the uh, Hall effect sensor that's built into the brushless motor uh, as an encoder. Um, right now, as a crutch, you'll see us using like the VP integrated encoders to tell where the, the arms are because we're controlling them over PWM. Um, but uh, in season, you'll be able to use these as, uh, as an encoder, which um, is, is really cool because you can just run CAN right up to the, uh, the motor controller combo and get sensor data from it. Um, and then looking forward, uh, tonight we're hoping, so right now we're driving. Um, we can run the elevator, just open loop. Um, we're planning on implementing some closed loop features on the lift and the arm uh, with motion profiling um, and also being able to drive uh, set distances and turn to angle um, for uh, creating some autonomous programs. Yeah. I mean, on this side, we're just doing the... Um, uh, sorry, you need the mic. Yeah, so TechFlare has historically gone with a Spartan board on the Rio. It's, it's a great um, add-on. It has a built-in gyro over SPI that we use. Uh, that gyro is actually, it's only one axis, so that's the reason that the, the Rio is not on the back panel and is uh, aligned with the, with the plane of the, the chassis. Um, anything else about the Spartan board? Um, no, 2590. Yeah, 2590 also uses it. I mean, it's really just a great product. That that's thing. pretty. Yeah, um, we don't have a lot of sensors that aren't uh, connected directly to a talon or something on this robot. But in general, the Spartan board is really nice to have because it replaces all of the uh, the uh, voltage outputs from like the five volt rail on the Rio with a uh, much more stable regulated five volt out. So your sensors and stuff are like if you have a t potentiometer or something connected, it's um, relative. It's much more immune to brownouts than if you're using the Robo Rio's five volt rail. Um, so besides the the nice gyro, that's a that's a, a nice benefit of throwing the Spartan board on there. Um, yeah. I think so. Uh, hopefully we'll have an update tomorrow with some cool motion profiling demos on, on the actuators. All right, cool. Thanks so much, guys. All right, so we wanted to actually bring back our gripper team because we forgot to show loading from the human player station, which we have over here. So they're going to go ahead and get that together and show how easy it is for us to take it from the human player station and score it back on the goal. Uh, we had a couple of people in chat asking us if we would be able to uh, accept the hatch from the human player station because uh, we had been mainly demoing off the floor. Um, we were thinking about this from the beginning um, and we can demo this now. Uh, do you want to go for it? Drive right up to the human player station, attach, and right out like that. You want to go over to the goal? Oh, it's not going to trigger. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Go for it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Want to be a little bit closer. Oh, number two. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, when we're uh, aligning with this on the robot, there's really no reason you can't uh, just push it all the way up against the board like that and eject as you're driving away. <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> still working out some issues, Kurt. Clearly, we're still working out a few bugs, but don't worry. We still got almost half of our time left in order to, to still accomplish this. So um, it's amazing what you can accomplish in just two days in robot in three days. Um, so with that, I think we are ready to take questions from the chat. So um, let's go ahead and uh, see if we have any. Okay, well, thanks for everyone for sending in some questions. We got a good list so far. Uh, first question, how much does the manipulator weigh? Uh, yeah, we uh, we've weighed it uh, right now. As of oh, yep. Uh, so the whole manip the uh, the whole manipulator here uh, weighs about twelve pounds. Uh, how how much uh, does your robot weigh total? We have not actually weighed our whole robot total yet. However, we do have. A, uh, a ship scale here in the shop that we will be able to uh, to weigh it at the end. Uh, can they 
Place the hatch on the rocket from an extreme angle. Um, I don't know about extreme angle. Um, we've tried it uh, about I don't know, five, five or ten degrees, fifteen degrees off, um, and and that seems to work um, because of the long stroke pistons. Um, even if one side is pretty much already on the Velcro, um, the other side will still get pushed on by the uh, longer stroke piston on the other side. Um, so maybe not extreme angles, but um, it seems to be doing pretty well with kind of what we think we can reasonably expect uh, the driver to be able to align. Next question. Uh, do you have a way to control which side of the rocket that the cargo comes out of? Um, to some extent, I mean, you, you have some control depending on which way you eject into the hole, we would, uh, we would say. But um, you, there's never going to be a situation where you have complete control. Um, you can, like we said, you can kind of point yourself in the direction that you want it to go. But you, either way, you still have to be careful if you only have one hatch panel in. Can you talk about your end game strategy? Yeah, uh, we could talk a little bit about that. Uh, right now, we're we're still working on that. We're mostly focusing on the mechanisms that manipulate the game piece, that manipulate the ball, that manipulate the um, the hatch panels. Um, current thought: We're gonna at least try Dukes of Hazarding to the second level. We'll see if uh, you know if the robot's able to accomplish that. We'll try really hard. Um, Ben, for yes. those who are uh, not of the uh, 70s, 60s, and 80s, can you please explain what that means? <laughs> yeah, so the Dukes of Hazard move is where you uh, you run at the ramp really fast and try to jump to get to uh, you know get some lift on your robot. So you know there's uh, the CG is slightly off, so that means we could have propensity to do some wheelies here. Um, so we, we may be able to do some fun stuff to try to get up on this ramp without adding an extra mechanism. We'll see. Um, for anyone who's unfamiliar with how this can be effective in a game, go ahead and uh, check out 25 from 2012, uh, the world champions of that year, one of them. So, um, you know, a yeah, very, very fun robot to watch how it took down the ramp. Have you done an updated BOM with the new rules? We have not done an updated BOM with the new rules yet. However, we are very aware of those rules. How are you planning on controlling the orientation of the intake, like the cargo side versus the hatch panel side? So, um, yeah, that's going to be controlled via, uh, we're calling it the wrist. Um, it's essentially another pivot joint. Um, it's, uh, um, so right at the back of the uh, uh, ball intake and uh, hatch panel pickup mechanism, um, there's going to be other pieces that extend off of this and uh, mount into uh, this intermediary device that houses the uh, motor uh, and chain drive for uh, this, this wrist mechanism. So you'll be able to rotate this um, from uh, f somewhat uh, almost parallel to the ground um, parallel to the ground for picking up the hatch panel uh, 90 degrees up for uh, intaking the cargo. Uh, and possibly, we're looking at the starting configuration. We're probably going to go uh, even farther up than that uh, just for the purposes of staying within the frame perimeter for starting configuration. When testing motors, is that a simple DeWalt impact that has been deconstructed with Anderson connectors on a wire coming out of it? Um, it, it may not be an impact, actually. I think it's just a normal drill. Um, but, but yeah, it, essentially, essentially, yeah. It, uh, um, it, we can, we could do a, a little bit further detail. Well, here we can just move it closer to the, the camera here so people can see kind of what's going on. There's just a wire coming out of it, and uh, li like we go to a, a drill motor, and instead it's going to a uh, wire with an Anderson connector. No, no, <laughs> probably not. What are your chassis measurements? Our chassis measurements are 28, 28 by 32, correct? Yeah, 28 by 32. Are you planning on making bumpers? And if so, how will you mount them? Yes, we are planning on making bumpers. Um, if we point the, the camera around over this way, yeah. Here, Matt, do you want to come over and talk a little bit about the bumpers? 
Yeah, Matt's behind the camera, so he's coming over to to help show us what's going on here. Okay, so we started the uh, bumper construction today. Um, actually started late last night got uh, most of it done uh, today fabricated a c-shaped bumper and it's going to wrap 50 percent around the back of the robot and then come down the side and then we're going to have the intake on the front so we have our our minimum six inch on the front corners and so just as we started filming here i was putting on the foam and we will be covering either late tonight or early in the morning with, with the fabric. So standard bumpers, pretty ho-hum. Mm -hmm. And also from the, the bumper standpoint, if we were to look back at the our drive frame um, on the robot, Tyler's going to turn the camera here real quick so you can see that. We actually have pieces of steel angle iron attached to the robot. You see like right here. The reason that we use steel in these situations is it makes your, uh, it's a really robust connection and weight doesn't necessarily matter for you when you're, uh, you know, working with your bumpers. You have way more weights to work with. So unless you're really trying to make a super light robot, it's very easy to uh, put weight into the bumpers that you need for the bumper connection. So you can see there that, uh, that we're doing that to attach the, the bumpers down. Do you guys have any concerns about tipping over so, while having a, such a high profile? Uh, I would say yes. <laughs> you, you always do. Yeah. Speaking as a team that tipped over ten times last year, you know it's it's always a, it's always a concern as you go. Uh, sometimes you have to just have to be careful if there's a game chest that you want to accomplish. Yeah. Sorry, I keep looking this way because the questions are being asked from there. I need to look at the camera. You talk about the Spark Maxes. Yeah. Do you, do you want to come up, uh, Andrew? Go ahead. Talk about the Spark Max. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, the Java libraries haven't been released yet, so we haven't really been using too many of the the super cool new features um, that you get from from using a Spark Max. Um, just using them over PWM here. Um, what we have uh, used is you can uh, plug them in over USB C and uh, use uh, the rev tool to like for example run the the motor without a a, a robo rio connected for like prototyping um because while the the dewalt tool is is really cool you can't use that on the brushless motors um see what else uh do they want to know anything specific any any specific questions um like i said we're really looking forward to just using the encoders that are built in um yeah. Uh, no, I think that's that's it. Like I said, we're we're just running them over PWM here and doing all of our control on the Rio because uh, the Java libraries aren't out yet. So, um, not really able to take advantage of, of all the cool features. But uh, you guys out there definitely will. So, uh, I really recommend taking a look at this if you're trying to spec motors for a, a mechanism. All right. Do we have any more questions? Uh, can you explain why you use the same mechanism for both the hatches and the cargo? You guys want to talk about that? Uh, using the same mechanism for the hatch and the cargo. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing this uh, on the first day. Um, most of this came down to how we were planning on fitting uh, both of these mechanisms on the robot. Um, this wasn't something right off the bat where we were like, all right, we got these two mechanisms. You know, we think we could possibly integrate them, so we're just going to go integrate them. Um, mostly, we were concerned about um, how uh, if, if, if we had one, only one on the front, uh, both of them were going to have to uh, go up and down to all different heights. Um, so they both had to be on the elevator. Um, so we were saying, okay, if we have one elevator, um, then we could have, maybe we could have one off the front and one off the back. Um, and we ran into some issues with that. Um, since we decided we had to go with a two-stage elevator, there's some design constraints that makes it hard to have things coming out of both sides of it. Um, you could also have two separate elevators. Uh, 2590 is familiar with doing that. Um, but uh, in this instance, we didn't think it was really warranted. Um, so the third option we kind of settled on was trying to find some way to integrate the mechanisms. Um, and especially because of how flat our hatch pickup um, idea that we selected was, we thought, okay, well, there's probably a way we can get this to fit on the bottom of the cargo pickup. 
Um, and so that's what we did, and that's how we came to this point. Ben? Yeah. All right, do we have any more questions? From D100, is the Velcro the same as the one in the Kids of Parts? The question is, is the Velcro the same as the one in the Kit of Parts? Uh, our, the Velcro that we're using is actually just normal stock Velcro purchased from, this is, here, I can, I can show the label, M, uh, mc.nuho1 right here. So this is, this is the Velcro, yeah, this is, okay. All right. Anyway, if anyone's curious, I'm going to I'm going to hand it over here to the side, and they're going to post the information in the chat, uh, because you know that that seems smarter than just me holding it up to the camera on the stream. All right. Are there are there any more questions? From Raleigh to Papito, are you going to be able to intake the ball? The question is, are we going to be in, able to intake? You don't intake? have to repeat it. I oh, got okay. You. Sorry about that. I forgot about that one for this one. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, the question. Okay. Oh, damn. All right. Yes, we will be able to intake the ball. We we showed it earlier in the stream. And then it goes, Grant. How do you interpret the new change in the rules to the compressor? Uh, we would say. Do one of you guys have a take on that right now? Uh, yeah. 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 We were actually talking about that earlier today. Um, we're not super sure, uh, to yeah. be honest. Um, in my first read of them, I, d I don't see a whole lot of mention about the offboard compressor, which makes me think that if they removed it, they, you know, they probably removed it for a reason. Um, but we're not, we're, we really aren't sure at this point. It sounds like a, some prime Q&A material. I will say our robot is currently using a Thomas 215 compressor. It's the, the same one. Um, 254 has posted that they've used it in a couple threads. Uh, it's a very popular compressor because it's got really fast airflow um, while still only weighing about a pound and a half. So it's a very useful compressor. All right, Ben, we're going to actually start our uh, giveaway for tonight while we take a few more cool. questions here. So. Uh, as mentioned before, we have the awesome shirt uh, from uh, Team First Capital, uh, which we'll bring up here then. So let's show that off. Ooh, ah, one of a kind. Uh, once again, we only do have a couple extra sizes available, so we'll try to accommodate you the best that we can. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we're also going to be giving away, uh, coming up on the screen, a Cooler Master MS120 keyboard and mouse kit. Uh, this is pretty sweet. It's 70 bucks if you go pick it up on Amazon, about 100 bucks at Best Buy. Uh, so if you're interested in winning this, Here's what you have to do. Make sure you click the uh, follow button that's on top of the page, or if you would like five time chance to win, click that subscribe button right now to help support independent content here in first. You can do so for free by uh, getting Twitch Prime or just a few bucks a month as well. And if you'd like to win, what you have to type in right now, you can spam it as many times as you want, but you only get one entry is going to be campfire the word campfire because it was based on some of our uh, podcasts that if you go check out first capital on their facebook page you'll see some campfire podcasts on there as well so campfire one word in the chat will get you entered to win good luck everybody all right thanks so much tyler you got anything uh any other questions heather from east stop what is your opinion on the viewing angle from the driver's station to line at both the rocket and the cargo ship so the question is about the uh, our opinion on the viewing angle. Um, so when we're looking at the um, at these these different items, one of the things that we've looked at using is the lines for line following. Uh, I don't know if you want to come up here, Andrew, and talk a little bit about line following and what our plans are or what our thoughts are on that anyway, even if we don't choose to do it in RI three D. Yeah, sure. So um, there's just a overview. There, there's retroreflective tape. Um, and vision is a great solution like to a lot of challenges like in 2016. Um, it's also one of those things that uh, has a lot of implementation details that you need to care about, um, especially with uh, with like the, the limelight and there's a lot of a lot more uh, COTS parts now that you can just or COTS software out there like grip that you can just use to, to track that stuff. But um, a much simpler option first has actually uh, given us stripes of tape uh, that directly line up where you're going to go. Um, and those are really easy to follow. Uh, in the kit of parts, there's Alan Bradley, right? Yeah, well, it's yeah. A, yeah. 
Yeah, there's an Allen Bradley sensor in First Choice that is basically it's uh, is used as line follower. They've used it in 2011. They had him in the kit of parts. Yeah. yeah so so basically, it's it's a simple IR sensor that it shoots out IR light, measures the response, um, and there's a little knob that you can use to basically tune what what threshold it toggles a digital output. Um, so if you put three of those or more, if you want higher resolution in an array you can use that to basically have your robot um, center on, on the white line after you, uh, you get close to it. Um, so it doesn't solve the problem of you know, finding it from anywhere, but it solves the problem of aligning it when you get close. Uh, and it's, it's really simple, just three IO pins later and, and you can follow a white line. Awesome, thanks Andrew. Heather, do we have any more questions? From Faulty Impulse, are you using any NEOs and if so, where? So the question is with the NEOs, we are using two on the elevator and one on the arm right now. So yes, we are, we are using three NEOs on the robot. Uh, TL White 33, are you going to program an auto or drive with camera feed? Yeah, so for, with regards to programming an auto and driving with camera feed, the answer is yes to both, I would say, right, to some extent. Yeah, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, I know I keep calling you up, Andrew. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, so our, our opinion right now is that you're, oh, I'm going to put that in my coffee. Um, <laughs> you're not going to, it's going to be hard to beat, um, like, manual control compared to uh, an auto that works consistently. Um, one kind of ideas that we're throwing around with, um, the most obvious is having you know the, the much requested A stop feature. You want to like kill your robot because it's doing something weird. Um, now you know you can do that or take over. Um, so that's something I think almost everyone should implement, just because it's it's basically a freebie that first is giving you. Um, once something else we're throwing around, if you know some part of our auto routine isn't quite consistent, um, you know you do part of your like get really close autonomously and then pass over control to to the human to let them do like the final alignment um, so there's a lot of a lot of potential in there um, I don't think autonomous is dead you know everyone's talking about that on r slash frc but uh, yeah yeah thank you Andrew and feel free if you have more code questions like this we're happy to answer lots of those we uh, you know are, are very uh, very proud of our um, our experience there Next question. How are you going to meet the starting configuration requirements? Yeah, so as far as the starting configuration requirements, we are currently less than four feet tall, and we are right at the 120 requirement for uh, the frame. So we are um, going to cut back on our four bar. That's going to be shorter. So that's going to allow us to turn our gripper back into our robot with our wrist, and then we will meet the starting configuration requirements. Next question. Uh, what considerations have you made when designing your robot to account for aggressive defense being played against you while in the highest positions? So aggressive defense is, is always a concern. Uh, we would say that the we've put some effort into knowing that our wheelbase is wide here. One of the, when you're under defense, our robot's designed such that you can be very close to being able to push your bumper against the side, so that's going to help you if someone's going to play defense on you. We're also significantly wide, so someone isn't going to be as likely to broadside us and make us fall over that way. So um, we'll definitely do more checks on that as we continue to improve our robots uh, over the next day and a half or so. But um, obviously defense is always a concern, and you always want to think about that as you design design your robots. From Yamo221, how are you going to fit an intake that large onto your robot, and also what type of shaft are you going to use on the intake? Now, Dahani Griffin, do you want to talk about how we're packaging this? Yeah, what was the shaft question again? What type of shaft are you using on the intake? Yeah, let's, let's, do, the, let's do the shaft question first also. Yeah, do you do you wanna do you wanna cover that part, Richard? Okay, so the shaft for the intake for the rollers is half inch aluminum churro. And I mean 
Is there anything else I yeah. add on to that question? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that works. Yeah. Oh, and as, as far as the wheels are concerned, the center wheels are um, the compliant wheels of the Vex Flex. Vex Flex wheels, my bad. And then anti Mark Omni wheels on the sides of that to allow it to roll towards the center with the flex wheels. All right. So uh, regarding the question about starting configuration, um, Ben mentioned before we're going to cut the uh, rails on the four bar um, so that the rotation point is closer into the robot. And then basically uh, we're going to have the intake rotated all the way back uh, so that it's in front of the frame. All right. Do we have any more questions, Heather? Uh, closing questions. Uh, do you think ground intake will be important from Marcel the Hippo? Um, ground intake will be definitely important for balls. It is in incredibly important, These, especially with balls shooting, balls dropping. It's very easy to miss your pop shots. Um, but it will be very important to pick up balls and collect them and bring them back uh, and to rescore them if needed. Uh, on the... Uh, on the hatch panels, we believe it is also important because even in our testing, we think that there will be lots of dropped hatch panels. So you need to be very cognizant of that. Uh, if you need to drive over them or if they're stacking on top of each other in front of a goal, you have to be careful with that. So being able to pick up hatch panels off the ground seems to be a very useful feature as well. Yeah. All right. You know, where, where do you, uh, yeah, are there any further questions? Yeah, I can think. Uh, uh from Hot Shots Mania, what speed controller would you prefer and why? They listed the Talon SRX, Victor SRX, and Spark Max. All right. Uh, so each speed controller is useful in its own application here, depending on what motor you're using, depending on what your implementation wants to be. Do you, you, you want to throw anything out here with when, when you'd use each one? Um, All right. So right now, I'd say uh, if you're using a brush motor, you probably want to look at um, the SRX because it's, or it, depending on the application, if you're just doing um, simple control stuff, the uh, Spark motor, motor controllers are great. Um, the SRX still supports a lot more advanced control stuff. Um, one thing you mentioned, the Victor SPX, you can have, like if on your drivetrain you have three um, SRXs, Instead, you could just have one SRX with like your sensors connected to it and then have two SPXs follow it. Um, and obviously, if you're using the Neo Brushless, uh, your only option is a Spark Max. All right, so I believe we have one more question. Uh, go ahead. From Bob Kinzoff, why is the middle wheel smaller? So the question is, why is the middle wheel smaller? You want to go ahead and take that, Richard? All right, so when we were testing different rollers for the intakes we found that when we were when we were focusing on getting the getting it so that it would pull the ball to the center having this smaller middle wheel allowed it to more accurately put the ball out in the center which is what we wanted it to do so anything else on that all right, thanks so much. I think I'm kicking it back to you, Tyler. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, draw for the uh, giveaway winner and find out who it's going to be once again. We're actually going to do two. So uh, let's do the Tech Fire uh, and 2590 uh, First Capital shirt first. So the winner of that is going to be our buddy uh, Lino down in Mexico. So, Lino, congratulations. You have gotten awesome. the awesome uh, jersey. Can we show that one more time? Sure, mm -hmm. let's do that. Yeah, and lots of rigged yeah, emotes in chat, everybody. Uh, Lino is a mod Michaela? and one of our hosts, and we have clearly rigged it for him to win. So congratulations, Lino, for winning on this one. That's all yours, buddy. Yeah. And uh, then for the Cooler Master MS120 keyboard and mouse set, uh, we want to give a big thank you to Cooler Master once again for donating this to us. Uh, there is a restriction. You do have to live in the United States to win this due to shipping restrictions. Uh, so the winner of that, and if you don't win, we'll give you something else. Don't worry. But uh, the winner of this one is going to be uh, Off and Back On. Off and Back On. Congratulations. Make sure you shoot first updates now. A uh, message in chat 
uh, in order to claim this prize. You need to claim it before our next show tomorrow, or we are going to re-give it away. So make sure you message me in lots and lots and lots of rigged emails and chat. And before we head off for tonight, do you want to give a big reminder? We'll be back here at 9.30 a.m. Eastern tomorrow through midnight. We're going to have our recap show at 9 p.m. Eastern, so an hour earlier. Uh, Some more goodies and giveaways as well, too. So make sure you check that out. And, uh, of course, we'll be here on Tuesday for the reveal during the midday. Uh, ben, we're running till about midnight tonight, right? Yeah, we're running till about midnight. So midnight once again, uh, Eastern time uh, for this as well. And don't forget to check out all the other shows that we have on First Updates Now. And make sure you check our YouTube page under First Updates Now for all the videos you might have saw here on screen. They all live there. If you want to see all these cool prototypes worked out, make sure you check it out. YouTube.com forward slash First Updates Now. All right, so thanks so much, Tyler. I would like to say, again, thank you to all our sponsors for making this happen. First Updates Now, Rev Robotics, Vex Robotics, Andy Mark, uh, Penair. We've got Coupling Corporation of America, Paragon Engineering Services, the York County Tourism Board, and all the parents who've helped us with building these different uh, game elements that are, we're able to show you all of this stuff. Also, I, I'd be remiss to not say thank you also to 225 for letting us put this on, obviously, and also to Nemesis 2590 for so much support, especially there's many of these uh, game elements you would see that would not be built without everyone who would uh, be able to help us out. So, anyway, we're going to try to interact with you a bunch in the other room as we're, um, as we're continue to do some of our tuning. We'll, we'll keep going here for a while, and any, uh, you know, any further questions questions feel free to shoot them out we'll try to get in front of the camera and uh let you know um yeah so we look forward to a great tomorrow hope for a fantastic build we need your help to keep fun loud live and independent help us by visiting our patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now you can also support fun live on twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your prime account for free and clicking subscribe